Fred, it's great to have you this morning. I'm not sure if you heard our conversation earlier with General Timmet, but he essentially said that the record of sanctions is weak, uh, hasn't worked in other countries, and leaders don't listen. Is that because they haven't been aggressive enough? And what is the likelihood that they will this time? What would that look like? Uh, no, there's no doubt the general is right. The, uh, the, the Biden administration officials that are putting together the sanctions and at 1230, President Biden's going to speak and we'll hear about some more. I can talk to you about what I think, what I'm expecting from that, uh, from that speech. Um, and, uh, and the administration officials now for Biden were the officials for Obama in 2014. And they concede that at that time, the uh, sanctions they put in place against Putin really did no good. They didn't influence him at all. This time they say they're going to do it in such a way it influences them, going after families, going after the family members and the children, uh, going after some major banks. And that's what I think is going to be announced today. VTB Bank, it's down half in, in value today. Um, a spare bank, one of the biggest banks in Russia, uh, you know, Rosneft Bank, um, uh, you're going to the Gazprom Bank, you're going to see larger banks than we heard about yesterday being sanctioned. Uh, there's also going to be a set of sanctions that really blocks uh, the transfers. It's a little bit more complicated. You'll hear about that more. But they see these as more serious. But where you're right is we're talking about Russia, the 11th largest country in the world, so a G20 country, invading a country of 44 million people. From an economic standpoint, if you go too far with the sanctions, oil and gas, which I'm pushing for, but other people say uh, that's just not in the cards, uh, you're going to, you could hurt the global economy and yourselves at the same time. So these have to be calculated in such a way to do the, the most harm to Putin and the least harm to the world economy. Fred, what about uh, some of the other export sanctions that have been talked about, such as targeting industries like chips and artificial intelligence capabilities? Are you expecting that later today? Where do you put that in the grand scheme of things? Yeah, we're, we're there are two. That's that's the one that we used against China and Huawei. Uh, it was unique. It hadn't been used that way before Huawei. And that's on the table. But I, I'm told it's not going to be announced today. Uh, that's uh, that's in the back pocket as things go further. The other thing that we've been pushing for, but we're told is not in the cards, is something we did against Iran, which is central bank sanctions. And that essentially freezes in place money that the Russian central bank has all over the world, uh, really gets a cu currency convertibility. I mean, it is, a, it is maybe even a tougher sanction than SWIFT. Uh, but I think they do not want to go there for the purpose, for the reason that it is a G20 economy and it could hurt uh, others as much as it hurts Russia. But that certainly would be a very tough sanction. But uh, the Russian economy is a much more important economy systemically than, than Iran is. And so far, the administration isn't going there. Fred, isn't this really about China to a large extent? I mean, sanctions work assuming that somebody wants to be a part of your club, but... Uh, China isn't even calling this Russian invasion of Ukraine an invasion, and they're trading with Russia more, it appears. Doesn't that, in effect, lessen any sanction impact the U.S. might try to have and uh, create even more of a, a West versus East dynamic here? So Russia has three things going for it economically right now that will make it difficult to hurt it as much as one normally could with sanctions. The first is $100 oil and going up. Uh, that puts a lot of money in their pockets. The second is they have more than $700 billion in currency reserves. And then the third is your point, China. Uh, China is, uh, is a little torn here. Because on the one hand, China refers to the, land, uh, sorry, the UN charter that says you should not uh, uh, go, you know, uh, go into a country like uh, Ukraine, sovereign country, and subjugate it. But on the other hand, uh, Russia has become a much closer ally. A couple of weeks ago, on the first day of the Olympics, you had a 5,300-word joint statement written by President Xi and President Putin. We haven't seen that close of common cause between the two leading authoritarians of the day since World War II. On the other hand, China's got to be a little bit careful because, uh, you know, they, they don't want to be seen abetting a terrible war. And so it's going to be really interesting to see how China navigates this next period of time.